Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a subscriber requested company by the name of Meta Materials. This is a really exciting organization in a super high growth field. Now before we get into it, please take a second, hit the like button guys. It's a huge help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And let me know in the comment section below if you're currently holding shares of Meta Materials, what you think about their business model, and how you think they stack up to some of the other players in this space. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Meta Materials Incorporated trades on the NASDAQ in the United States under MMAT. Now, as you can see, this is as of close on Monday, November 7th. They were down 16 cents on the day or about 10% to close out at $1.46 US and down an additional 2% in after hours trading. So this was the daily chart here, you guys. And if we pull up a six month view on Meta Materials, you can see they were peaking out around the end of May at two bucks. They had another run pretty close to $2 right at the end of June. And then they bottomed out here just recently, October 3rd at 64 cents. So depending when and where you got into this stock, you may be extremely happy or not so much. But if you were able to get in at the start of October, you've doubled your money despite this big pullback we saw during today's session. Now based on today's close, you're looking at a market cap in the neighborhood of about half a billion dollars, 530 million really placing meta materials squarely in the penny stock category. Now we've got a lot to get through today, but I wanted to start off with the chart here just to give you guys a little bit of context into the recent price action. Now with that being said, and to kick off today's presentation, I wanted to jump over to the Meta Materials corporate website. I'll leave a link in the video description below and just give a bit of background or context into what this business is all about. So if we jump into the About Us section, you can see About Meta Materials, ticker Meta or M-E-T-A again on the NASDAQ, is a developer of high performance functional materials and intelligent surfaces that are scalable, sustainable and efficient. Through applied physics and advanced design, we are pioneering a new class of multifunctional materials called metamaterials, which have engineered properties that go beyond what is found in nature. So really designing and creating these next generation materials to meet a lot of the needs of these up and coming industries, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Our extensive technology platform is software and AI design driven, and this allows the development of a library of solutions of functional prototypes much faster and a lower cost than traditional chemical synthesis. Our core capabilities include holography, lithography, wireless sensing, AR fusion, and their plasma fusion technology or platform. Now we're gonna talk about some of the target industries in a second here, but these include consumer electronics, 5G communications, health and wellness, aerospace, automotive, and clean energy. So a lot of the most high growth, cutting edge technology or verticals in the market today and they've got a secure facility where they manufacture this nano optic technology, which ensures anti-counterfeiting security measures and brand authentication. Now, as you can imagine, Meta has already worked and has partnerships with some of the world's leading companies, including Airbus, Cetair, Lockheed Martin, and Sikh Su, and Meta's nanotech business recently renewed a frame agreement with a top 10 central bank to develop a new security feature and has delivered its Lumachrome technology, which is a security feature for more than 30 banknote denominations. So these are actually one of the security features found in paper money. And as a result of all of this innovation and creativity, Meta Materials was recognized as Lux Research Innovator of the Year last year in 2021. And I should call out, we made reference to the Meta Material category up here in the About Us. And if we scroll down a little bit and actually define what Meta Materials are, these are a new class of functional materials designed around unique patterns or structure, which causes them to interact with light and other forms of energy in ways not found in nature. Meta Materials enable properties and capabilities that go beyond those found in natural materials. And these are generally not possible to create using conventional material discovery or specialty chemical manufacturing technologies. They typically consist of a multitude of structured individual elements referred to as meta atoms and these meta atoms are of the same size scale as that of the electricity circuit in a computer chip. So an extremely small scale manufactured to extreme precision. 
And you can see they talk about this precision here in terms of the shape, geometry, size, orientation, and arrangement of these nanostructures that allow them to interact with electromagnetic waves of light, radio waves, and other forms of energy to create material properties that are not easily achievable with natural materials. And that's why these metamaterials can be used in security features like the banknotes we just looked at in the previous example. Now in terms of the actual technology and the platforms created by Meta, you can see they've got a wide array of different technologies. So they've got their live optic line, their color optic line. You can again see banknotes are featured there. Their Vlepsis platform, electro optical and infrared system, plasma fusion, metamaterials and functional surfaces, AR fusion, holography, wireless sensing, lithography, and finally customer solutions. So you're really getting quite a diversified product offering here or portfolio of these metamaterial solutions or applications. And because we just talked about those bank notes, I thought it was relevant to throw this article in which came out September 29th, talking about a purchase order in excess of $4.3 million for their nano optic security business, which provides that anti-counterfeiting feature on currency. And you can see this is actually that top 10 or G10 central bank customer referred to on the company website, which is a five year contract, really positioning Meta as a global leader in banknote security technology. Now, if we jump into the investor presentation, you can see Meta Materials is really focused on providing solutions for everyday life, delivering breakthrough performance across a range of applications and industries, which we just talked about by designing, developing and manufacturing sustainable and highly functional materials. And the way in which Meta Materials has differentiated themselves or what they call the Meta Advantage is really broken down into three key priorities. So number one is speed. As we alluded to, because they use AI software to design a library of these patterns for different applications, they're typically able to develop new custom solutions within a few hours as opposed to multiple months with other competitors. So they essentially do a lot of the planning, strategizing and legwork in advance so they can then go and customize these solutions in a lot less time when clients come to them with specific asks they're not starting from scratch each and every time now secondly is scale so meta is one of the first companies to develop proprietary roll-to-roll -roll production equipment to produce large area high volume nano composites so again their production facility is state-of-the-art it's highly secure and it has the scale to produce a ton of the material or meta materials that are becoming more and more common in a lot of these industries and then finally is just cost so this is really a direct reflection of scale increasing the roll-to-roll -roll web width and line speed or production speed of this manufacturing line should drive their actual production costs down to a few dollars per square meter which makes this company even more competitive when you stack them up against some of their peers. And speaking of peers, I thought this was a really interesting slide. Again, in the investor presentation, they've broken it out into five different categories here. So these are true meta material companies. You can see meta materials listed there alongside meta wave, meta boards, AMC, Sonobex. So these are emerging disruptive companies. They've got low production costs and high margins, which we just talked about. You then have your existing chemical and specialty materials company. So these are larger incumbent companies. They deal with bulk materials and a lot less specialized. So these are gonna include ones like Mitsubishi Chemical, 3M Innovation, DuPont. You've then got carbon nanomaterials, which are trademarked by slow processing, expensive scalability, and exposure to the fluctuation in rare earth prices. Then you've got your semiconductor materials sector. So this is players like LG, Intel, some of the more well-known semiconductor companies. And finally, ITO or specialty coding manufacturers, which is listed in the fifth bucket here, and are generally characterized as having average performance and exposure to precious metal pricing. Now what's interesting is you can see any of the companies with these black dots around them have existing relationships with Meta Materials. So you can see AGC, PPG, Lockheed Martin, Samsung, Sikisu, and Covestro. So realistically, in every category other than the carbon nanomaterials, Meta Materials has an existing professional relationship or partnership in place. So with that being said, they're definitely not the only player in this high growth and exciting sector. However, they do have a lot of industry connections and a lot of differentiators when you start to compare them to other metamaterial organizations.
Now, the reason we're starting to see so many companies flood into the meta materials sector is really because of the market opportunity or the total addressable market that this sector represents. So when you look at the various different industries that can benefit from meta materials, including 5G infrastructure, so required to actually roll out the antennas, the reflectors, vehicle electrification, so electric vehicles, advanced driver assistance programs, and autonomous vehicle driving, the internet of things, medical, energy, aerospace, automotive markets, which are estimated to be worth an additional $3 trillion just in these other verticals alone, you can quickly see how lucrative and big of opportunity Metamaterials actually represents. And the chart on the right here actually shows the Metamaterials market forecast over the next eight years, so from 2022 to 2030, you can see this is a very new industry here. So we only initially saw demand for metamaterials in the communication sector really back a couple of years, so 2019. However, by 2022, you can see that this has already grown into a near $4 billion market, which is expected to surpass $10 billion or $10.7 billion to be exact by 2030. So the growth trajectory and the demand for meta materials is absolutely exponential. And obviously if you're supporting industries like 5G rollout, electric vehicles, the internet of things, these are huge growth opportunities and they require a lot of these specialized and precision materials in order to make those technologies work. And this slide here really shows the range of solutions that meta materials can solve for. So things including aerospace, defense, augmented reality, the automotive industry, specifically electric vehicles, banknotes, which we just talked about, batteries, clean energy, communications, which was really the first adopter of these meta materials, consumer electronics and health and wellness, and then some of the various different technologies and their practical applications. So under the holography banner, you've got the hollow optics and the meta air. Under lithography, you've got the nano web platform. Wireless sensing, you've got the glucowise. Precision integration, you've got their AR fusion and plasma fusion technology. Under nano optic, you've got the color optic platform. Nano ceramic, you have NPOR and nanopore. And then finally, the electro optical or IR infrared, which is covered by their Vlepsis platform. So regardless of the market or the industry you're looking to serve and the type of technology you're looking to leverage, Meta Materials has it covered and you can see a robust intellectual property portfolio including 450 active patent documents, 288 issued patents covering 103 different patent families of which 62 patent families already have at least one issued patent within them. So to me, this is another huge point of differentiation is you're getting this diversification and all of this technology is patent protected, giving meta materials the opportunity to really compete in any of these different verticals. And in the interest of time, we're not gonna go into each and every one of these technologies, but I thought the electric vehicle case study was super relevant. We talk about EVs on this channel a lot. So this is just one example of where these meta materials can be used. So the intended outcome here or the EV consumer desire is to increase the range and improve the charge time of these electric vehicles. This requires improved material performance in terms of energy density and charge rate demands, which also need to be stable and safe. And as we continue to see more and more EV adoption, we're gonna require better material utilization or to become more efficient at these actual input materials and to reduce the cost for the end consumer. So Meta Materials is developing two new battery materials and manufacturing techniques to address these challenges. Their NPOR technology is a nano ceramic battery separator that features under 1% heat shrinkage for increased safety and offers superior electrochemical performance. The other technology is their plasma fusion, and this is used to make thin coated copper current collectors, which actually reduce the weight by 80% and inhibit thermal runway. So these are just two specific use cases or examples of how Meta Materials is addressing some of these needs in these up and coming markets. This one happens to be the electric vehicle market for these very niche solutions that have an overall huge impact on the greater industry and EV adoption overall.
And really, MetaMaterials has examples like this in any of these markets or verticals, which are laid out and described in their investor presentation. Now, we just talked about their portfolio of intellectual property and their patents. So this slide here has a lot of the same stats, but you can see this is a huge component of the organization. And these patents cover everything from the actual devices and components to the scaled manufacturing and the fabrication and origination of these technologies. So it's actually the production and bringing this stuff to market, which is also protected by this intellectual property portfolio. And the final thing I wanted to leave you with is just some of the financial highlights from Q2. Now, Meta Materials is actually gonna be putting out their Q3 numbers on November 10th. So this is a great opportunity to take a look at this company in advance of earnings. But some of the highlights from Q2, revenue was $3.3 million, which was up 430% year over year, which is absolutely phenomenal growth. You can see some of the key takeaways there, the nano optic security development, the global currency demand continuing to grow, and the focus on this currency or banknote market opportunity. They put up a net loss of $21 million. So the company is losing money at this point in time. And their loss per share had more than doubled versus prior year comparables. So that'll be an interesting metric to keep an eye on later this week. They had cash and cash equivalents of about $55 million and long-term debt of about $3.2 million at 0% interest. So again, when you consider the market cap of this company, the numbers do look fairly healthy here. And this article, which came out October 31st, talks about the upcoming Q3 results, which again are gonna take place after market close on Thursday, November 10th. So that's definitely a key date to keep in mind. Now, with that being said, I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts on Meta Materials. Again, thanks to the subscribers who put this one on my radar. Let me know if you're currently holding shares, how you think they stack up to some of the other players in the Meta Materials sector, and what you think about the growth opportunity here moving forward. Now, if you're still watching the video at this point, hopefully you found some value, so make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.